We've gone 17 days without any measurable precipitation. That doesn't mean we haven't seen rain in that time. It just means that at the Bluegrass Airport, inside the collection bucket that receives the rain, there just has not been anything. Well, that will change for sure tomorrow, if not late tonight. We are tracking quite a bit of active weather, and that being with a cold front, which is what we see out towards the west. If we zoom out, you can tell that there's a lot of activity that's happening, not just in the upper Midwest, but then you get down towards the Great Plains where a lot of strong shower and thunderstorm activity is hanging out at this time. Well, then you look down towards the south and you're starting to see the outer rain bands of what is now Hurricane Nate making their way up into Louisiana. So Barataria Bay all the way to the Mississippi River Delta getting some rain as well. So we're going to be tracking that throughout the next few days. It is a Category 1 storm. That means 80 mile per hour sustained winds with a gust up to 95 at times, 987 millibars, dropping that pressure rapidly. Keep in mind, it has a lot of real estate to go before it gets to a mainland landfall. So it will likely strengthen a little bit more. It may not make it to a Category 2, but it will definitely strengthen from here. Now, the saving grace with this storm is the fact that you see at the very bottom, it says north-northwest at 22 miles per hour. This thing is booking it. And the reason for that being is because it's caught between high pressure and a cold front. Remember the cold front I was just talking about? That cold front and the high pressure that's out towards the east are sandwiching the storm right in between. And when high and low pressure are very close together, the winds are going to crank. And that's exactly what's pulling this storm as fast as it is. So that's the reason why it's likely going to stay a Category 1 all the way to landfall, which is going to be somewhere near Biloxi, I'm sure that Gulf Shores, uh, Fort Morgan out towards Dolphin Island. These areas are going to get hit hard with the wind. But the rain profile of the storm extends all the way from western Louisiana out towards the eastern seaboard. So we've got a long ways to go with this storm. Now getting into Monday morning, that's when this thing makes it to Kentucky. Notice how it kind of parallels the Appalachians. It does move right over the Cumberlands, basically the state line with Virginia. But it doesn't mean that we're going to be out of the rain. We're out of the wind profile. That's the good news. Everything will be kind of on that northeastern quadrant. But we're still dealing with quite a bit of rain as this thing comes through. Eventually becoming a post-tropical low, getting picked up by the upper level jet stream. And then it's out of here in a matter of four to five days. This thing is picking up speed. That's the good news on this storm. The bad news is it is going to be a hurricane. It is something we have to watch. Hurricane warnings all the way from Gulf Shores out towards Lake Pontchartrain. And then we've got tropical storm warnings all the way up to Birmingham, Alabama. Tropical storm watches extend all the way up to the northern section, the Blue Ridge Mountains of Georgia. So we've got a lot of area is going to be affected by just the wind of this storm. But keep in mind, it's packing a punch with the rain as well. So once again, this is what I was talking about. Here's that cold front, and here's that high pressure. High and low pressure very close together. Notice how those winds are picking up. That's what's going to steer this storm and steer it quickly. Up to our region, this is a little bit further west than where it's actually going to go. But keep in mind, it just keeps on trekking north and east and out of our area once the upper level jet stream takes this storm away. So with the future track, we'll put timing on everything. First, it's going to be the cold front. What that will bring is some instability. So likely a few showers popping up later in the afternoon. Then the cold front swings in late tonight, early tomorrow morning. And then it's attached to the outer rain bands of the storm. So there you go. Heavy rain throughout the morning, afternoon, and all the way throughout the day with the heaviest of everything straddling the Appalachians and keeping going through the Cumberlands. Then finally, Monday afternoon, things come to a close. So that's kind of how everything goes through. If you want to put some rain totals on everything, anywhere from two inches to about four inches in central and eastern Kentucky. Pretty much everybody in eastern Kentucky is going to be right around that three to four inch range. But there could be some spots locally higher than that. Are we talking about flash flooding? Probably not. But what we are talking about, the fact that we have a lot of dry soil sitting around, we haven't had rain in a long time, all this rain at once is not a good thing. So now we're talking about creeks, streams, rivers, urban street flooding. All of these are going to be a factor throughout the next few days, specifically tomorrow evening as that rain comes through. Yes, we have not used that 100% in a long time, and we typically don't. But I can guarantee you everyone will have at least a shot at some rain tomorrow. Going throughout the week, things start to kind of calm down. We're not quite losing that heat. We actually get back to some sunshine, some summer weather. Really? Yeah, it's the summer that will quit. Week. I know, I know. But again, I think after this, all this rain and cooler weather, summer wouldn't be too bad. Yeah, absolutely. But glad to get the rain, Seth. Absolutely. Thanks so much. And you'll want to stick around. There's more LEX18 news coming up after this.